it's Mike here. Once again with some groundbreaking evidence in regards to an intentional effort to create a sizable event at the New Madrid Seismic Zone. This is damning evidence. Of course, it's always damning when you're on the other side of the fence doing all the dirty work. And uh, anyhow, if you haven't heard of me, then I'd say the media is doing their job and keeping your focus away from these events. And if you have heard of me, it's thanks to the YouTubers who all collaborate uh, in, in an effort together to spread the truth about what's happening. And so, in having said that, I ask anybody who sees this video to pass this on to as many people as earthly possible. Re-upload this video to your channel. Do whatever it is you got to do to get this information out. This is how dire this information is. If something was happening to, to our world, which it is, and I'll, I'll do a brief overview on it. However, if something was happening to our world that was so major that it affected, that it affected the entire population, would you not want to try to tell as many people as possible? Why do you think the mainstream media has gone quiet? They've gone hush-hush on everything. You know, it's awfully strange that the media picked up uh, the story at the beginning of the year of all these animals dying, and then one week into it, there was that event in Arizona, and then their focus shifted all together, and they haven't said not one single peep about this since. However, reports continue to pour in from around the world. Media reports... Uh, personal reports with evidence that thousands upon thousands of animals are still dropping dead. What the hell is going on here, people? This should ring a bell for you, okay? This should ring a bell. So let's let's get started on this brief overview here. I first reported at the beginning of the year that the first three animal kill zones uh, coincided with the antenna array configuration for the software used by Dutasond receivers that are utilized by HARP and other such ionospheric heaters. And in this picture, I show the, uh, the three die-off locations are at the 120 degree angle from each other and define the perimeter of the most active region of the New Madrid Fault. The HARP antennas calibrate signals using a 120 degree radiating angle from the center point. The Digisond computes comparative signal strength along with each ray of the antenna for directional tuning. Okay? Now, I'm not going to go into depth on, on this stuff because, well, if you, really need to see, uh, if you really need to see it all, you can go back on my channel and look at the videos. But I do want to give a brief overview. We'll skip on to the next picture here. And this pretty much shows the three f towns that first started off the animal die-offs. Gilbertsville, Kentucky, BB, Arkansas, and Labar, Louisiana. And it shows the, uh, the focal point in between the 120 degree uh, area. And, and it just so happens that that focal point sits right above the most active region of the New Madrid seismic zone. Okay? So, uh, and having said all that, let me, uh, let me go ahead and, and get this next picture up. Sorry, my screen capture software slows my computer down. Right here, we have the locations of Digison receivers around the world. Okay? And I'm sure this isn't all of them, but these are the ones that are reported. So, and then when you, when you put in the animal die-offs, and I'm sure this, this, uh, this has been updated since, anywhere these Digison receivers line up is where there have been animal animal kills. So, and moving on, this is a map used by uh, originally uh, produced by Edgar Casey and used by the Air Force. It's called the or the Navy. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's now used for I guess to show uh, soldiers what what the coastlines of America will look like. And if you have a hard time believing that, I want you to pay real close attention to the center of the United States here. That's the Mississippi Valley. Okay, this is what Edgar Casey had projected. Now I'm going to show you a real-time picture, like a, an updated computer image of the same 
event. You see that? Now, do you uh? Let me let me let me go right here and do you see this? This is about the area that that BP oil well was drilling, and you see where that rift or fault line comes out at Louisiana and Mississippi. Well, that oil rig was drilling not too far from there. And when it, where it drilled actually created a big amount of instability in this fault zone. So, and having said that, I'll move on to the next picture. Okay. This right here. Now, we're connecting the dots here. This is important. And I still haven't got to the damning evidence yet, so y'all stay with me, okay? It's important we know all this stuff. This has to do with FEMA camps. Okay, and I'm going to read this uh, paragraph. Hallie Burton has been awarded a contract announced by the Department of Homeland Security, United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, component. The indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contingency contract is to uh, support ICE facilities and has a maximum total value of $385 million over a five-year term. The contract provides for establishing temporary detention and processing capabilities in the event of an emergency influx of immigrants into the United States or to support the rapid development of new programs. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, we all know that's a cover. That gives them a reason to go ahead and build these facilities and leave them laying empty until they're actually used and filled up by people like who? Us. Moving on. Let's connect the dots with the FEMA coffins from a few years back. We all thought the FEMA coffins were put there because of the swine flu. They, they were made because of the swine flu. Now I'm starting to see this is, this is bullshit. Excuse my French, guys. I, I'm sorry. I'm a little excited about all of this news. Not in a good way either. So you just have to bear with me in my language. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not out here trying to please one person or another. I'm just trying to get the news out. So bear with me. Anyhow, a company, Vantage Corporation in, in North Georgia, uh, was awarded a contract to build all of these coffins, okay? Uh, notice Vantage with the uh, symbolism in their name there. You see that? Anyways, the Illuminati are big on symbolism. And they're also big on hints. But anyways, this company was awarded a contract to build all of these FEMA coffins. We all thought it was for the swine flu. Well, guess how wrong we were. And I did witness myself these coffins being transported through Indiana, which also lays on a New Madrid fault zone. Right here, we'll show you pictures of, of the coffins being stored in Georgia. And uh, right here, we see, uh, well, this is more back towards the FEMA camps here. Uh, this is Swift Luck Green's Department of Homeland Security uh, in central Wyoming and maximum security facility. But anyways, going back to the coffins here, this is North Georgia where they're storing hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of these coffins. There, there's a reason for these, you know. There's a reason that each coffin can hold up to three or four bodies, all right. They're not going to be. Uh, they're not going to be nice and neat about it. It's going to be sloppy work, and and bodies are going to get stashed in these things and burned off. Something's going on. Okay, these coffins were not, or I'm sorry, supposed coffin liners were not uh, were not ordered, and this company was not contracted to make these for no reason. Well, now that a reason, uh, now that reason is taken on a, a, a face that we can actually see. It's not just a mystery now. Okay, so bear with me. All these, uh, all these FEMA trains that were once talked about uh, here a while back. Well, they're going to use those things, okay? Those things are going to be used. Now, I'm not sure if the picture that I'm depicting here is the actual train, but I do know and have seen pictures of these rail cars with bench, uh, bench r rows of bench seats in them and, and, and rails right above the, the seats. And to me, that indicates uh, a place to handcuff somebody as they sit and are transported. And the thing you've got to remember is... Uh, the Illuminati and, and, and Freemasons, they're all about giving off hints to events, okay? And you've got to remember, uh, President Biden has been doing all of the hinting since uh, the Obama uh, 
campaign took the presidency. And the beginning of the campaign, when they when they first were awarded uh, the, the seat of the president of the United States, Obama clearly stated, okay, or I'm sorry, not Obama, uh, Joe Biden clearly stated that this was going to be a train-friendly administration. That's kind of like rubbing it in your face right there without giving it away, don't you think? He also stated that this administration was going to be tested in an in, in extreme manner, and I am pretty sure he was uh, referring to the events that we're about to face. So anyways, having said that and showed you these pictures, I'd like to take you to some articles that I've been reading here uh, as of lately. And with these articles, I'm going to show you the new proof. First off, animal deaths are still being reported across the world. Okay, and We've got Beijing, China reporting uh, all kinds of, of dead birds. And you know... and. Uh, in the article, it says that uh, uh, it, it says that they've died of starvation and unfavorable weather conditions. Um, I think that's BS, and I'm going to call them on it. Uh, they're they're twisting. You know, all around the world, there's a different reason for every group of animals that dies. Okay, that's called disinformation from the media. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the hundreds of thousands of animals that have died are dying for one one reason. I mean, when it's all at the same time, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. So we move on to all these fish dying, fish kills. Uh, they say, well... Uh, these guys were trapped in the ice, and that's why they've died. Once again, they're coming off with a BS reason as to why the animals are dying, and they're feeding it to the public. That's BS, folks. Uh, don't pay attention to that. It's not true. They're, they're filling your heads full of lies, okay? Now we're going to move on to, let's see what we have here. Uh, okay. Now, for those of you that don't believe in uh, chemtrailing, which they've done here today, chemtrailing and geoengineering and weather modification, I want to show you this website called Weather Modification Incorporated. And I'm going to show you a list of all of the countries and states that are involved in this. Okay? Look at all these, look at all these countries. Okay? These are all names that would that would throw off the normal person but when you know when you know about chemtrailing you know this is just a cover these are just covers look at all of them in the united states most of these countries just have one or two facilities but look how many the united states has okay look at the names of these facilities all right nevada state cloud seeding program north dakota cloud modification project okay uh north or new mexico blast which is an acronym for burst light and stratus transmission project okay i mean it, it, it can be go it could go on and on all right uh, oklahoma weather modification project it goes on and on illinois weather for Mo weather modification projects uh gradient weather modification projects and, and this stuff just it goes on and on. Uh, Stanislaus Weather Modification Program, State of South Dakota Department of Natural Resources Division of Weather Modification, Texas Central High Plains Rainfall Enhancement Program. I mean, it, it, like I said, the list goes on and on. So they cannot deny that weather modification is taking place because here it is in black and white for all of you to see. Okay. So I just wanted to get that out the way because this morning I woke up and the clouds were so thick with chemtrails. The sky was so thick, and and it appeared that the sun, okay, that the sun didn't rise at its normal time. It seemed like it lingered uh, for about 15 or 20 minutes longer than it should have. Now I'm sure that's probably not the case, and I might be off, but I can guarantee you that that the sun did not come out come up at its normal time. I get up every morning at uh, 6 o'clock to go to work. So I know 
I know what the what it looks like when the sun comes up, and I know about what time it gets to be light out. Well, this morning, that wasn't the case. It was so thick and nasty out as well this morning with chemtrails that the 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 moon was just a, a speck of light behind these thick, nasty, soupy-looking chemtrail clouds. So they're they're spraying this stuff up there for a reason, and I wonder if 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 it's not only you know, I wonder if it's for multi-purposes, like to support the uh, weather modification uh, programs, also to support the HARP program, because it does release chemicals that help to electrify the a atmosphere. And uh, I also wonder if at the same time they, they, they hide things from us so that we can't see or so that it throws us off, such as the position of the sun, the moon, things of that nature. Well... Guess guess what, folks? The sun made an appearance in Alaska a couple of days ago for 12 minutes, a couple of days before it's supposed to appear. In Greenland, the sun came up two days earlier than it was supposed to. You know, I've, I'm hearing stories about the uh, the moon being all, off track in the sky. You know. Uh, these these stories are coming in from around the world, so something very very big is taking place. Okay, something is happening. It's being covered up. Nobody's talking about it. I feel uh, I feel that uh, it's very odd that even um, Alex Jones isn't talking about the 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 Earth changes uh, per se, like as far as the the sun uh, rising. Uh, early in places or the the moon being off track why is that you know i don't know he's all about making people pissed off and making them think the uh the war is fixing to start however he's not talking about the things that are important and right now the events of what's happening in the world are very important because it affects us all. It's the planet Earth, folks. It's a global thing. We are all going to be affected. We all need to prepare for what's coming. Now, I still hadn't gotten to the new evidence here that I've got against uh, FEMA and, and uh, that helps to support our theory about an intentional earthquake. Now, I'm sure those people out there are going, well, hurry on, hurry on, get to it, get to it. Well, it, it, if you're in a situation that, uh, that requires you to hurry up and get to that information and you can't spend 10 minutes of your time or 15 minutes or even 30 minutes uh, gathering this information to learn something, then you don't need to be here. So, and we'll go ahead and say that. You don't need to be here. Anyhow, moving on, uh, I want to get to how the Gulf of Mexico oil spill is, is, and this was written summer of last year, okay? And it talks about the New Madrid fault zone, okay? You need to look here, all right? There's a very important aspect of the Gulf of Mexico oil spill crisis that hardly anyone is talking about. You see, it's not just an oil spill that BP has unleashed on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. What BP has done is that they have uncorked an oil volcano that is violently spewing oil and gas out of the floor uh, of the Gulf of Mexico so violently and with such pressure that it is beyond the capacity of human technology to control it. Well. They said they got it, and that's what the oil cap was for. Remember, this was written the summer of last year, so bear with me. Millions upon millions of gallons of oil have already been pumped into the Gulf of Mexico, and millions upon millions more will continue to be pumped into the Gulf before all of this is over. So could all this violent activity on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico spark seismic activity in the region that could potentially be absolutely catastrophic? Pay attention, folks. Could this oil volcano cause an earthquake along the New Madrid fault line that is so powerful that it could bring about the end of the world as we know it for those living in the area? Those are legitimate questions. And it goes on to talk about this, and I'll leave a link there for all you guys who want to come back and read the full story. But think about it. That was summer of last year, and here we are going through, uh, we are going through these events now, and I'm absolutely sure that they are. Uh, and, and you know uh, that they have something to do with uh, the BP oil spill. And here's another article that's uh, very interesting, and it goes on to talk about. And this is the article that this is the article that I got that had that map right there. 
and it says the Mississippi Canyon and what a seismic or nuclear event could trigger. Okay, and what they what they're talking about is when they were discussing options for blowing that whale with a nuclear bomb that it would create activity in a seismic zone, the New Madrid seismic zone. I say New Madrid, New Madrid, tomato, tomato, for all you picky uh, folks out there, uh, you know, whatever. Anyways, it, it, this is what could happen to the Mississippi Valley with an event uh, that, like we're talking about here. Look at the east coast of Texas, how much underwater it is. Look at all these areas underwater, okay? Uh, looking over here at North Carolina, Man, it, it gets kind of close to where we're at, but, you know, we're up in the mountains, so we're in this mountain range right here, so I feel safe and secure for now. But look, it practically separates the entire east coast from the west, the entire east, east coast from the west. What's going to happen to us all? What is this going to do to our lives? You think about it. I'll link up this story for all the rest of you guys to read. Right here is a website that... Uh, it's a sunrise sunset calendar. Um, I'd like for you guys to all pay attention to this site. I'll put a link down in more more uh, details because we need to keep track of when the sun is rising and when it's setting. All right, because something is wrong. Though the world is vibrating, the world is shaking, and, and it's throwing off our sunrise and sunset and the path of the moon. If you guys can't see that uh, the gravity of this Earth is being perturbed, that something is going on. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but I'm trying to offer you information here that'll help you solve these, uh, solve this puzzle and put the pieces together. So I'll link up to that uh, in the more details section of the uh, video. Now let's get to the evidence here. Finally, getting to the evidence. Now, I reported that FEMA was buying up all the fruit, uh, the. Uh, freeze-dried food that is available for survivalists and whatnot. Now here we have the proof. This was issued on the 20th of uh, January 2011. Notice type. Sources sought. Okay? And who this applies to? All other miscellaneous food manufacturing. Contracting Office. Department of Homeland Security. Federal Emergency Management Agency. Okay? So those are those are the customers here that uh, that are buying up all of the food. And here we go. Uh, let's go back to where it's important here. Description: The Federal Emergency Management Agency procures and stores prepackaged commercial meals to support readiness capability for immediate distribution to disaster survivors routinely. The purpose of this request for information is to identify sources of supply for meals in support of disaster relief efforts based on a catastrophic disaster event within the New Madrid fault system for a survivor population of 7 million to be utilized for the sustainment of life during a 10-day period of operations. All right, they're planning on this, guys. Check it out. FEMA is considering the following specifications. 14 million meals per day. Okay, then it goes on to say what the serving size and, and, and uh, nutrition of these food foods should be. Okay, now look at them. This is going out to all these organizations. They're doing a questionnaire on whether or not uh, uh, these companies can can support these, this request, okay? Uh, and they're numbered questions all throughout, and I will provide a link for this as well for you to read. Uh, here we go, something else interesting. Remember I told you Walmart was, was designated as a FEMA store and would be – one of the only retailers out there allowed to distribute uh, and sell food products uh, to Americans. Now look at this. Does your organization have the capabilities to deliver products directly to FEMA's CONUS distribution centers? CONUS is, uh, I think it stands for, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, not contingency, but uh, continuity of the United States. Okay, CONUS, that's what I believe it stands for, something along them lines. Okay, and, and it, shows, it shows that they're asking people, do you, do you uh, qualify for this contract? Okay, 
Okay. It says vendors are encouraged to ask the government questions regarding this potential requirement. Okay, and they're saying that all submissions for these uh, this request must be uh, in no later than 2 p.m. 26th of January 2011. They're pushing for something. Think about it. Connect the dots, people. All right, FEMA coffins. They were out two years ago. This tells you this has been this is something that's been in the works, that's been planned. Okay, uh, uh, three years ago. I'm sorry uh, for the FEMA coffins. And now look, they are requesting all these meals be. Uh, uh, they're looking for a company that can support delivering all of this food to where they want it to. And it states right here that uh, that. Uh, the purpose uh, of the request for information is to identify sources of supply for meals in support of disaster relief efforts based on a catastrophic disaster event within a new Madrid fault system. All right, look at the for a survival population survival population of seven million. They're looking at serving fourteen million meals per day. Something is right around the corner, folks. I've shown you guys the seismic activity. If you haven't seen it, you need to go look. All right, I've got videos that show the activity that I've taken note of, and I've got videos that show, show normal activity. For all those skeptics that say what I was showing people was normal, shoot, you need to go to the video that shows, shows the normal activity, and then eat your words, okay? Because for me, I think you're shills. I think you're out there trying to, trying to ease people's minds about all of this. Look, I'm not chicken little, and I'm not calling, calling that the sky is falling, but... I'm calling for uh, th this is uh, this is all cause for alarm, okay? And you can you can react with you can react with uh, common sense and a plan and prepare for this event, or you can react with fear, okay? And not get nothing accomplished at all because you're too scared, all right? You're too sh shocked by the news that you're receiving, but something is going on in the world. The media is not reporting about it. This is a very, 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 very important thing, all right? All of the dots are, are coming together, FEMA coffins, trains, um, the New Madrid, the birds and the animals, everything is all finally falling in place. The dots are, are finally being connected. This is just one more nail in the coffin uh, in regards to proof against our government, the New Madrid fault system, and, and HARP, and, and all the intentional efforts at creating drama uh, in, in our daily lives with a, with a catastrophic event. Okay? If you guys... Uh, if you guys need any further information, please, before you PM me, look down in the more video, the more detail section of the video, and there will be links to everything that we're looking at here, okay? And, and I'll be glad to answer your questions the best as I can, but something is coming right around the bend. And if you don't believe that this isn't something that we need to pass around to every single person we know, then I hate it. Something's wrong with you. Okay, because this is a catastrophic event on such a level that it involves everybody, the whole global community. Okay, even a little event at the seismic zone, in, uh, the New, New Madrid seismic zone, is cause for a, an alarm because it would affect affect the entire world. I mean, the the, the death of the Gulf Stream has already affected most of Europe's weather conditions over there reporting that uh, they haven't seen winters like this for a thousand years okay everything points to a uh, pole shift a new intentional ice age like I've been talking about and and martial law in regards to a catastrophic event that is being planned for now this isn't something there ain't no ifs ands or buts about this it's coming and if you can't see the signs in, in, in everything that I'm showing you, then I'm sorry. I, I guess I have to say you deserve to deserve to be where you at, be where you're at after an event. Because well, you didn't want to listen, you refused to see the signs, and and you believed your your local media and your mainstream media outlets. Well, that's what they want. They want you to throw your hands out for some help when it goes down. Guess what, guys? I ain't gonna do it. I hope none of you do either. Now let's get this information out here to people. 
let's get them to researching and investigating. I see a lot of people out there, and I hear from a lot of people who are talking about how they're opening the eyes of coworkers and friends and family, and, and they're doing it in the right way. They're, they're, they're not trying to shove all this information down their throat at the same time. They're giving them bits and pieces. And once some people look at the bits and pieces, the doubters or the, the people that just don't know about it, once they look at the bits and pieces, they come back for more. You know, they're hungry for more information, and that's how you do it. Kudos go out to all them people who are busting their asses to get this information out there. That's how important this is, okay? And there's something else I need you to know. Things are happening because, because of the fact that me and Jenny put this information out there for all y'all, okay? Things are happening with her. Things are happening with me. And I need to let every each and every one of y'all know that I do have – uh, a backup plan in regards to uh, what's going on with me and if something happens to me all you guys need to know that my family knows where the location of a digital recorder is and uh, they can get that and I have some requests on that digital recorder and uh, I'd like for everybody to make contact the best that they can for those that know me to make contact to get this information public if something are to, were to happen to me. Also, been a victim of electronic harassment. For you guys that have any doubts on that, uh, that actually being a technology that, that can be used, please research the silent sound spread spectrum technology. Okay? Electronic harassment. Research it. I'm going through it, but I've got something coming that's going to that's gonna fight that. And, and I'm going to use that to prove in videos that it does happen. So, anyways, and having said all this, let's get this information out there, people. I'm sorry to be long-winded and, and to sit here and go on and on and on, but guess what? Our world is in danger. And guess what? Where do you live? All right? That's all I need to say. Where do you live? I love each and every one of you guys. Uh, Thank you for subscribing and viewing these videos, and I thank you for all of your collaborative efforts to get this information out there. I'm making a push for every YouTuber out there that stands for something. Enough respect. Uh, John Knowles and Exomatrix TV. All you big timers, Freemason TV out in England. I'm making a call for you guys to put this video on your channel to let people see because strength comes in numbers. Uh, John and uh, aka enough respect you've got hundreds of thousands of subscribers why not use that power to put this information out there that's how it was given to me my voice is becoming bigger because of the efforts of John Knowles and, uh, and Exo Matrix TV he has given me the audience that I need to get this information out there now I'm asking I'm calling out to all you guys to put this information out there okay that's how important this is I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.